All right, so let's talk about the midterm. I put some points up here um, about the midterm. I'll pull up the study guide too. There's a study guide online if you haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Please do so. It is based on the midterm. Okay, under the midterm study guide, the list of topics, and then I've got some kind of a little bit more specific information down here as well about each of those topics, and we can kind of go through those um, quickly. So it's worth 125 points. You'll have the entire class period to, uh, to complete it. Again, it is Tuesday, we're gonna have that. Uh, there are 33 multiple choice and true false questions. Uh, they are, the true false I think are worth two and a half points each and the multiple choice are worth five points each. Um, read the questions very carefully, every word, okay? Because that can be, that's obviously um, important. It can kind of trip you up. There are a couple of questions in there that are easy to misunderstand if you read them too fast. So take your time with it. I've had students that will, you know, they'll finish, blow through this and finish it in no time and then they realize that they really didn't read the questions <laughs> very thoroughly and so just take your time you've got the whole class period with it take your time um, reading those questions there are two extra credit questions that are also worth five points each they are not multiple choice or true false they are short answer they do involve calculations and so what I want you to do um, is put the calculation, there's a spot in there to write what the calculation is, how you arrived at it. Um, do that because, here's the thing, I will not, if you just put a number in, I'm not, you're not gonna get credit for it, for the extra credit. And if you do the work and you show me the work and you just missed, like you had a calculation error, you put, you know, you inverted a number or something like that, I have a tendency to give some partial credit if I know that you understand the concept of it. So show your, but if you don't show me your work, I don't, I, I don't know what your, what your thought processes are, okay? So make sure you show the work on those. Um, you can have, again, one sheet of notes front and back. Also one sheet of scratch paper. So you can do your calculations there and if you, if you want to show me, like, I know that typing in is a pain. Like, if you're typing in your work is a pain. If you, instead, you want to give me that sheet of, of scratch paper at the end of the period, then just, you know, put your name on it, and I can I will use that as your, your calculation. So that's fine um, as well. So the calculator, there's like I said, there's calculator on the computer, or you can bring in your own simple calculator. Um, no cell phone calculators. I'll ask you to put your cell phones away during the, I, I, want, I don't want anything on the, the desktops except your, your one sheet of notes, your one sheet of scratch paper and a pencil or pen, whatever you're gonna use, um, and the computer. Um, questions about the outline of it, or not the outline, about the instructions. <coughs> Can you believe we're already at midterm? It kind of blows my mind. All right. The study guide. <coughs> These are the concepts that are covered in the in the exam. So, remember those laws in chapter one? You might want to review them. I'm still suffering here. Um, so, I mean, you don't have to know the, except for the FLSA. I expect you to know more about the FLSA, but I don't expect you to know the details of like when they were enacted, when they were enacted or anything like that, like the ADEA or the FMLA or anything like that. But if I say FMLA, you should know what that is, right? You should know what it stands for and in general, what it entails, okay? 
So along those, those kind of the, the 30,000 foot level, I want you to have a basic understanding of those employment laws and the tax laws as well. Um, that code of ethics, we went through that early on in the, uh, like in the first couple of days as well. Take a look at the code of ethics as well. Look at those different points. Um, <coughs> human resources versus the payroll department, what the responsibilities are for each of them. I like this means. Um, the payroll cycle, what I'm referring to there, <coughs> excuse me, there is an image, and let me see if I can find it. of the payroll system. Take a look at that image, okay? Um, I mean, we've talked about these, these concepts generally and uh, what the process is, but that's a good, that one is a good reminder for you. Um, like what happens first, what happens second, what happens third in that whole payroll cycle. That's on page 1-23 if you've got the paper copy of the book. But it's also in the other one, okay. Payroll frequencies. Um, so if I ask you a question about if you know the semi-monthly payroll, how many payrolls are there during the year? Or if there are 26 payrolls during the year, what is the what is that payroll frequency? That sort of thing. Um, new hire reporting. We're talking about the forms that are used when somebody is first hired. Um, specifically, you know, that I-9 form for sure. Um, but you know the application form and and all that kind of stuff. What what type of information do they contain? Exempt versus non-exempt employees. Review what those those definitions are. What makes an exempt employee? What makes a non-exempt employee? Remember, we're talking about whether or not they're exempt from the overtime and um, the overtime and minimum wage requirements of the FLSA. That's what we're talking about with regard to exempt versus non-exempt. Um, Social Security acts, so OASDI and HI. Wage base, know that wage base. You should know that by heart by now. Um, that additional Medicare tax and the uh, when it's when it is applied, what that tax rate is. Details about the FLSA. So you remember the the four general areas that are covered by the, the FLSA. Overtime regulations, minimum wage regulations, child labor regulations, and then there are also some record keeping requirements that the FLSA um, mandates, right? Um, enterprise coverage versus individual coverage, kind of review how those two different ways that employees could be covered by the FLSA and protected by the FLSA. That employee, the employee earnings record versus the payroll register, know the difference between those two, the type of, in, the type of information that they contain. Uh, form 941, so payment requirements and filing requirements, which we have just gone through over the last couple of days. Um, seek attacks, that self-employed, um, self-employment tax, independent contractors versus, versus employees, so control, who, who directs the control, how do we determine whether somebody is an independent contractor or a, uh, an employee. Minimum wage, both federal and local, what are the rules for minimum wage? I mean, if, so if states have a lower minimum wage, what is the prevailing minimum wage? If they have a higher minimum wage, what is the prevailing minimum wage in that location. Um, <clears throat> tip income reporting. So when do employees report their tips? 
to employers, um, which we did cover, I think, in chapter in chapter two. So again, here's some more kind of specifics about the payroll laws that you might want to take a look at in, in particular, spend a little bit more time on, and the forms. Uh, let's see. Employer responsibilities for withholding. Pretty much all the stuff that we've already we've already talked about. What constitutes taxable wages? That job description, you might want to read it, read again about uh, what's entailed in a job description, what kinds of information is, is, needs to be contained in that job description. Overpayment of FICA taxes. Let me see what the question is. <clears throat> talk a little bit I, I, I may be glossed it over a little bit about the fact that if you know if an employee has two different jobs during the year an individual has two different jobs during the year and combined with both of those jobs they exceed the the Social Security wage base so they made a hundred thousand the first job hundred thousand the second job both employers are going to withhold on that full hundred thousand dollars Social Security taxes but they've overpaid. Turns out they've overpaid because that wage base is 160,800. They do get a refund then of the additional amount. I think I talked about the additional Medicare tax, and that is the case for, for the additional Medicare tax as well. But also for just the Social Security tax, that they will get a um, when they file their own tax return. That's where they'll see that refund, right? The employer doesn't get a refund on any of it, but the employee does get a refund. All right, let me see if there's anything else here that I want to say, and then if there are any questions that you guys have. got your chapter three stuff is due tonight don't forget about that so we'll do the midterm Tuesday I've got here as well scheduled a midterm post review so we will go through it um, on the following Thursday and then get started on chapter four income tax withholding so all right well if you don't have anything else I'm done <laughs>